everyone, my name is Audrey Ladd, I'm the Education Programs Manager here at the Texas Ranger Hall of Fame and Museum, and welcome to today's Storytime with Audrey. So we are going to be reading Little Red Hot by Eric A. Kimmel and illustrated by Laura Holsinki Fife. Now I do want to have a special shout out to the Waco McLennan County Public Library because that is where we checked out this book to read today, so thank you. All right, let's get started. Little Red Hot. Once upon a time, there was a little bitty Texas gal called Little Red Hot. Folks called her that because she loved to eat red hot chili peppers. She ate peppers for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. She ate pepper ice cream for dessert. She had hot pepper cake for her birthday with jalapenos on top instead of candles. Folks used to say that Little Red Hot could eat fire out of a stove. Little Red Hot would answer, no, I wouldn't do that. Fire ain't hot enough. One day, Little Red Hot's mama said to her, Little Red Hot, I heard from Grandma today. She's feeling poorly. I think she has a cold. Could you drop by and look in on her? She'll feel so much better to see you. I'll do that, Mama, Little Red Hot said. I'll bake a hot pepper pie, Grandma's favorite. It'll knock those cold germs right out of her. Little Head Red Hot got busy in the kitchen. In no time at all, she had mixed up a hot pepper pie. She used Louisiana hot sauce instead of milk and filled the crust with eggs, cheese, and the hottest chili peppers she could find. Each one came with a warning label. Little Red Hot put the pie in the oven to bake. She didn't have to turn the oven on. That pie was so hot, it baked itself. Here are some of the warning labels. Jalapeno peppers that could make a grown man weep. Tabasco peppers that could knock over a longhorn. Habanero peppers that could take paint off a wall. And Naga Jalokias from India, one of the hottest peppers in the world. Little Red Hot got on her pony and set off for Grandma's house. Along the way, she met up with Pecos Bill and his cowboys. Hey, Little Red Hot, where are you going? They called to her. I'm taking a hot pepper pie to Grandma. She has a cold, Little Red Hot said. Now you be careful on your way to Grandma's house, said Pecos Bill. We just talked to the three little tamales. They said that Senor Lobo, the big bad wolf, is prowling around the neighborhood. You keep an eye out for him. I'll do that, Pecos Bill, Little Red Hot promised. No sooner had Pecos Bill and the cowboys ridden out of sight when Little Red Hot saw a big gray animal loping toward her. Hold it right the hair. Don't you come any closer, Little Red Hot yelled. I know who you are. You're Senor Lobo. Pecos Bill warned me about you. The big gray animal stopped running. You've got me all wrong, miss. I'm not Senor Lobo. I'm Senor Coyote. I may be tricky, but I wouldn't hurt a fly. You're mighty big for a coyote, Little Red Hot said. And you're a mighty smart little girl, and pretty, too. Where are you going? I'm going to visit my grandma. She's feeling poorly, said Little Red Hot. What a little good little girl you are. You tell your grandma I hope she feels better. And off he went. Of course, that big gray animal wasn't Senor Coyote at all. It was Senor Lobo and Little Red Hot had no business talking to him. But it was too late to do anything about that now. Even worse, Senor Lobo knew a shortcut that took him straight to Grandma's house. He stepped up to the front door and knocked. Little Red Hot, is that you? Grandma said. Senor Lobo made his voice sound like Little Red Hot's. Yes, Granny, I heard you were sick. I hope you're feeling better. I feel better already now that you're here. Come on in. Senor Lobo did just that. Grandma let out a yelp when she saw him. Grandma was sick. 
but she wasn't slow. She jumped out the window and ran. I'll catch her later, Senor Lobo said. He rummaged through Grandma's clothes until he found a spare nightcap and nightgown. He put them on and hopped into bed just as Little Red Hot arrived. Howdy, Grandma. It's Little Red Hot. I'm sorry you aren't feeling good. Why is your front door open? To let in the breeze, darling, said Senor Lobo said. I thought I brought you a surprise, Grandma. Little Red Hot went into the kitchen. She cut a big wedge of hot pepper pie and put it on a plate. She carried it to Grandma's bedroom. Senor Lobo lay on the bed with the covers pulled up to his nose. Little Red Hot looked at him real hard. Grandma, what big eyes you got? The better to see you with, darling, Senor Lobo said. Grandma, what big ears you got? The better to hear you with, darling, Senor Lobo said. Grandma, what big teeth you got. Now don't say another word, because I know what they're for, said Little Red Hot. What are they for, darling? Senor Lobo asked. They're for eating this hot pepper pie I just made for you. Little Red Hot shoved that wedge of pie into Senor Lobo's mouth. To say he yelled wouldn't do him justice. He hollered so loud space aliens could have heard him in the next galaxy over. He didn't go out the front or the back. He shot up straight up like a rocket right through the ceiling of Grandma's bedroom, trailing fire and smoke as he went. That's when Pecos Bill and the cowboys arrived. Grandma told us Senor Lobo came by. Where is he? Little Red Hot pointed up at the hole in the ceiling. He went that away. I don't suppose he'll be back. Would y'all like to stay for supper? I got hot pepper pie for everyone. No thanks, Little Red Hot, Pecos Bill and the cowboys said. We're brave all right, but not that brave. So Little Red Hot and her grandma ate that hot pepper pie all by themselves. Every last crumb. And guess what? It knocked those cold germs flat out. The end. Well, thank you all of you for joining us for Storytime with Audrey at the Texas Ranger Hall of Fame and Museum. And we hope you can join us next time. Bye-bye now.